Bombshell allegation in the murder of little Kaylee Anthony. Prosecutors released what they call incriminating evidence. Casey was stone-faced watching her father sobbing openly in court for the first time. And it's hard to take in and assimilate that what you're seeing is not what the evidence is telling you. Casey, Marie Anthony, the jury of your peers have been found you not guilty as to the charge it contained in count one of the indictment, murder in the first degree. At this time, I will adjudge you to be not guilty. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about a case that impacted a lot of people's lives severely, especially that of Kaylee Marie Anthony. This case has been undergoing investigation for at least a decade and new things keep coming up, new interviews, new sources, things like that. So I'm going to talk to you guys about those as well as what happened with the whole Casey Anthony case. There's also something extremely interesting that I found that the grandfather of Kaylee Anthony explained that he had experienced in his own home something supernatural so I thought that was very interesting to put in this video so make sure you guys stay tuned for that as well. If I do get things wrong or leave things out please comment below, be kind, and let's get right into this. Casey Anthony was born on March 19, 1986 to two loving parents Cindy and George Anthony. In 2005, when she was just 19 years old, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl that she named Kaylee Marie Anthony. Sources have said she seemed to be a very loving mother to her daughter. She never snapped at her. She never yelled at her. She always listened to her daughter. Just things that a good parent would do. And Kaylee's grandparents absolutely adored her and loved her. She was very energetic, very full of life. Just an overall strong, spirited little girl. But things slowly started turning into a nightmare. So in June of 2008, Casey took her daughter Kaylee and they said they were going to go on a mini vacation in between Jacksonville and Tampa, Florida. So on June 16th, 2008 was when George Anthony had seen Kaylee alive for the very last time. They took one of George and Cindy's cars and off they went. Things seemed to be normal, it seemed to be just a trip that they were going on, but they were gone for a while and Cindy Anthony started worrying because Casey was on the phone with her all the time and she did not let her speak to Kaylee. So she was very confused, she was like, I want to speak to my granddaughter, like I really miss her and I just feel detached from her right now like can I speak to her on the phone and she would just make up excuse after excuse as to why Kaylee couldn't talk on the phone with her. She's almost three years old at this point so I don't know what she would be busy doing to not be able to talk on the phone with her grandma. It's just very weird and the grandma thought that was weird as well. So it wasn't until June 30th, 2008 that the car that Casey took Kaylee in had been towed away because it was left abandoned in Orlando, Florida in front of a cash advanced business. So of course the tow company, they called Casey's parents and at this point they had became very concerned because why is this car abandoned? Where is Casey and Kaylee? No no contact, nothing at this point. Cindy had claimed that Casey had been missing for a month basically because she hadn't been answering her. The car was left in an unknown location and she was very worried. So Cindy later discovered that her daughter was staying with an unknown boyfriend she had never met before or heard about in a different part of Florida. So why lie about going on a mini vacation? Why not tell her, hey, I'm going here with this guy that I really like and I'm having a relationship with when you are you have a child and you're 
a full-grown adult. That's just very weird. Cindy thought it was weird as well. So Cindy then got her daughter to come home and she actually called 911 because she reported that her daughter stole her vehicle and she wanted to take her to the police station. The three-year-old was not there at this point and she didn't know where she was so she was very flustered and freaking out. These are actual voice recordings from that phone call. Hello. Hi, I need to bring someone into the police department. Can you tell me where I can, the closest one I can come into? What What are you trying to accomplish by bringing them to the station? I have a 22-year-old person that has um, grand theft sitting in my auto with me. So the 22-year-old person stole something? Yes. Is this a relative? Yes. Okay, is this your son? Daughter. My car was stolen, we retrieved it today, we found out where it was at, and I've got affidavit for my banking account. I want to bring her in. Okay. I want to press charges. Where, where did all of this happen? Hope Spring Drive. That's actually going to be in the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. Let me transfer you. Okay, because my next thing will be down to trial thing, and we'll have a court order to get her. If that's what you want to say, we'll do it. You'll never. Well, then you have one more day. No, I'm not giving you another day. I've given you a month. Nine one one. I have someone here that I need to um, be arrested in my home. They're there right now. Possible missing child. I have a three-year-old that's been missing for a month. A three-year-old? Yes. Have you reported that? I'm trying to do that now, ma'am. I'd like to speak to an officer. Can you have someone come out to my house? Okay. Okay, i got to ask you these questions so I can put them in the, in the call, okay? Okay. Okay, what's your name? Casey. Anthony. Casey's there right now? Yes, I got her. I finally found her after a month. She's been missing for a month. I found her, but we can't find my granddaughter. Is Casey not telling you where her daughter is? Correct. Okay, we'll have a deputy out to you as soon as one's available, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And then later that day, Cindy actually got her daughter Casey to open up and Casey then broke the news that her daughter had been missing for 31 days. So Cindy calls 911 back and tells 911 them- 911, it's your emergency. <laughs> I called a little bit ago, the deputy sheriff saying I found out my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. Her, her mother finally admitted that she's been missed. So she just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. Okay, what is so someone what is, here now? We're talking about a three-year-old little girl. I need to find her. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. My daughter finally admitted that the baby shouldn't her. How long has she been missing for? I have not seen her since the 7th of June. George, can you miss it? Can you miss it? Is your daughter there? Yes. Can I speak with her? Can you stand here? They want to talk to you. Hello? Hello? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit what's going on? My daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. And you last saw her a month ago? 31 days. It's been 31 days. Who has her? Do you have, do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. And, and why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which was stupid. The next day, July 16th, Casey was arrested by police in suspicion of her daughter's disappearance. She then told police some very vital information that her daughter had supposedly been kidnapped. She had claimed that she left Kaylee in an apartment with a babysitter named Zaneda Fernandez Gonzalez and that both of them were missing when she came home. But even the sheriff on the phone was like, why didn't you call 31 days ago when your daughter was gone? That's just very strange that she wouldn't call. She then made this excuse that she had other resources to try to find her and that it was dumb. But if your daughter's missing, then why aren't you 
getting police involved, anyone you can, why are you just doing other sources that aren't reliable? So the reason Casey was arrested that day was for child neglect. Then on July 22nd, at another hearing, detectives had revealed that they found a strand of hair that could have matched Kaylee's hair in the trunk of her car. Also that the cadaver dogs that they had sent in to investigate had smelled human decomposition in the trunk of the car. And they actually ran tests on this in a documentary that I watched. They ran tests with the dogs, they put trash in one car, whatever was found in Casey's car, they put like pizza, old garbage in one car, they put something else in another car, and then they put human remains in a separate car. The cadaver dog that they tested, it went directly past the trash, past whatever else, it went directly to the one with the human decomposition smell. With out a second guess like it didn't it didn't stop at any of the other cars it went directly to that one laid down did its thing to tell you hey there's something in here that's human so in Casey's defense she used that oh it was the garbage like that's just what smelled that's what the cadaver dogs picked up but no they're specifically trained to find human remains not garbage so there definitely was something there they also found traces of chloroform in the car which they later thought that maybe it was the glue from the liner in the trunk of the car they thought it was the glue that was the chloroform. They also did tests on that and they said that it would be very, very difficult to make chloroform at home, especially not being a chemist and not having the right equipment. So that was a little iffy there. They still don't know what that was. But that day at that hearing, when they told the court what they found in the car, Casey's bail was then sent to $500,000. So after this, they then decided Casey was a person of interest in a possible homicide. Before they were looking for a lost little girl that had possibly been abducted or was alive, now they're starting to look for a deceased girl who was possibly murdered by her own mother. So in August, a reality TV star named Leonard Padilla, who was also a bounty hunter, that's what the whole reality show was, was contacted by Casey Anthony, and he actually offered to post her bond. So a few days later, Casey was released from jail. She then went back to jail on August 30th because she was charged on new charges as well as petty theft. A few days later, something very sad came up. It's that the police, they really believed that there was no chance that Kaylee Anthony was alive before there was possibly a chance of her being alive and just missing, but now there's none of that. Casey was released from jail yet again just from those other charges. The same month, that babysitter that Casey had claimed kidnapped her daughter actually filed a defamation lawsuit against Casey. Later, investigators wanted to go with Casey Anthony to see if maybe she had evidence for them, if she had anything that would trace her daughter, anything that they could possibly find to find this little girl, and Casey kind of led them on a goose chase. She took them to Universal Studios Orlando, where she used to work a long time ago, but she told her parents that she was still working there when she actually wasn't. So what was she doing on her days off? She then took police there. Police reported that when they were there, when she was trying to get through the gate, they had no record of Casey working there. They had asked for a number that she could give them or anything and she, failed to do so, but they did let them in anyways. And once they got to the end of a hallway, she was just kind of leading them around. She turns around, she says, I don't actually work here, which left police baffled. Like, why are you lying to us? Why are you taking us to these places if you want us to find your daughter? So this led police to return Casey Anthony to jail and she was arrested again with lying to investigators, petty theft, and the use of a forged check. 
now it gets to her being named one of the full-on suspects of her daughter's disappearance or murder. So on October 14th, Casey was then charged with first degree murder, aggravated child abuse, aggravated manslaughter, and providing false information to law enforcement. Something in court that George Anthony actually found disturbing was that the lawyer of Casey tried to pin the disappearance of the daughter on him, trying to say that you need to take the fall for your daughter, that's what a good father would do, trying to to manipulate him into doing so and Casey even told her lawyer that her father had molested her in the past and things to get sympathy for but the father is very very adamant that he did not do any of that however I don't know we may never know but I just thought that was very strange that that would come up and that she would try to put the blame on her own father when she claimed to have nothing to do with the disappearance. During all these months, there are people searching, there are groups of volunteers that are searching an area that Casey said that she last saw Kaylee in. So her neighborhood was right here, the neighborhood that Kaylee grew up in. The area that she wanted everyone to search in was way, way over here. So they kept searching over here in this area and it wasn't until a man, he had pulled over on the side of the road and he saw a weird bag in the woods. He actually called 911 to report the bag. It was like a swampy area that had possibly been filled with water in the past but was dried up now. He said that he saw this weird bag and he wanted someone to investigate or whatever. So police came. They didn't quite get to the bag. One of the police fell down a hill and he said it's not worth it because they that's a dumping ground for just trash and they thought it was just possibly trash in the water. The man later called again saying, hey, you guys really need to check this out because I've came across this multiple times and it just doesn't look right to me. It wasn't until the third call that the police had taken this extremely seriously. The man reported that there was a human skull the size of a child. It had hair on it. It had duct tape over its mouth. He even said on the phone call, he said, I don't know if it's Kaylee Anthony. I'm not gonna say that, but you guys need to get down here because there are human remains here. So police then came, they looked at the body, and they inspected it. They later found out that it was Kaylee Anthony. Casey Anthony, she kind of led everyone to believe and look way over here when the body was found just right near the last house in their neighborhood. So the man who actually found Casey's remains, his name was Roy Cronk, and he at first was sort of a suspect because he did find the body, but then he was later named not a suspect and he was just a bypasser who had found the remains, fortunately, because they probably would have never found her if it wasn't for him. A year or two later, Casey Anthony was actually found not guilty for the murder of her daughter. They still don't know what happened to her. I will read the autopsy reports here, but this has been just a crazy investigation. It's extremely sad. And I personally believe that the law is the only reason that Casey is not in jail right now or with the death penalty. Because the law requires you have specific evidence, specific support, witnesses, and whatnot, and they just couldn't come up with all of that because the remains of Kaylee were very decomposed. There was not much that they could really find, not many DNA samples that they could get. So she's just just walking free right now and we still don't know what happened to to Kaylee and it's really really sad so rest in peace to her there was an interview lately with Cindy and George Anthony and they are devastated they have trouble sleeping George actually had an attempt of suicide he left a note he tried to kill himself but he was not successful fortunately something George actually stated 
in an interview I thought was extremely interesting and very sad at the same time but it might be comforting to him. He's actually experienced a lot of paranormal activity in his own home with Kaylee and he said that he's seen her just like she's alive and he's walked down the hall with her she's tapped him um, here I'll actually show footage just so that you guys can see what he explained happened to him I've seen Kaylee on a couple of occasions I've, I've, I've walked with her down the hallway she walked into her old her own room or someone is an apparition mm -hmm. oh no I've, 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 I've seen her I've seen her in the flesh I've seen her in your right, house in, in my house one time she woke me up in the morning just I tapping on it. with my her little finger like she used to do was this a dream oh it wasn't a dream it, it was like you and I are talking right now how do you explain that the strong spirit that's in our house something else I want to mention is that Casey actually went on um, I think it was on Mother's Day or around Mother's Day she did a, an exclusive interview and she actually said some words that very, were very disturbing to me everyone else has their theories I don't know uh -huh. so your parents had her my dad did I'm okay with myself I sleep pretty good at night. If your daughter was murdered, I wouldn't think that you would sleep well at night ever. I don't think that you would even say those words. It's just so sad and disturbing. Her own parents claimed that she might be mentally unstable. She's had a bunch of seizures. She might just mentally not be where she should be. I'm going to share the autopsy reports of Kaylee Anthony as the last Thing. So it's reported here that there was no trauma visible on the completely skeletonized remains of slain toddler Kaylee Anthony, but however there were overlapping pieces of duct tape over her mouth according to the autopsy reports released. The tape was still attached to head hair and the skull was separate from the other body part. This duct tape was clearly placed prior to decomposition, keeping the mandible in place. The cause of the child's death is listed as homicide by undetermined means. The roots growing into the vertebrae and bags indicate that the body was placed there months prior to being found. There is nothing inconsistent with the body being there soon after the day of Kaylee being last seen alive. Again, rest in peace to that beautiful little girl, and I hope one day that she gets justice. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave comments below of what you think, who you think did it, what you think happened, and I will see you guys in my next video.